Good afternoon, YouTube. High mileage rider here. It's an absolutely beautiful Thursday, April 18th afternoon. Just left work. Today was my first ride to work. I uh, didn't do any video from it because as I said before, I'm still figuring out this camera. And uh, when I left for work at 5.30 this morning, it was pitch black. Wasn't sure how the camera would do. I'm sure it would do fine. So after work today, I'm uh, taking the long way home. About 130 kilometers, we're going to head out to Wetaskiwin. We're going to go past a couple of small towns, a whole bunch of farmers fields, and then just enjoy this wonderful day. Today it is 17 degrees. Summer's on its way, the birds are chirping. So while I was at work, I was thinking, you know, what could we talk about while we're enjoying this wonderful ride? And uh, I had an interesting discussion today with a co-worker at the hospital who also rides. He happens to have a FZ07 naked bike. And we were talking about uh, what kind of gear we preferred to ride in, both in the fall, the spring, and the summer. He's very much a uh, tech jacket, mesh tech jacket, and pants. So he gets the uh, ballistic armor in the uh, shoulders, the back, the elbows, and then in his pants he has it in the knees, the shins, and the hips. The uh, tech materials have a wonderful advantage of being quite warm when it's cooler out for the spring and the fall. And uh, you can zip layers out of them, uh, which will allow you to uh, improve your ventilation as it gets warmer. Today, as you can see, I am wearing my Olympia Motorsports Tech Jacket. It's a bright yellow, lime yellow color, I guess. High viz And I have a uh, white helmet. I believe uh, not only lighting on the motorcycle is important to help you be seen, but also what you wear. Helps you avoid accidents and of course those are the best ones. You always want to make sure you can avoid the accident if possible. So he asked me why I uh, didn't wear full leathers all the time. And I said, well I do have full leathers. Uh, when I had my previous bikes, which were cruisers, uh, to fit in with my buddies, I had the full leather riding pants, which go over my jeans. And then I had a leather vest and a leather jacket. The vest was worn inside to help cut the wind on cooler days. And uh, I would obviously get rid of it in the summer. And uh, the reason I liked the leather, or started out with the leather, I guess, is for abrasion. I looked at a bunch of different studies and saw what was the best if you came off your bike at 100 kilometers an hour and you were sliding down the asphalt and nothing beats leather for abrasion. Now, there are some things you give up with a lot of leather products. One of them is impact resistance, having the CE armor, either the hard armor or the soft armor that becomes hard when it has an impact. My leathers do not have any armor in them. So what I did is I ordered armor from a company called Born Armor. So I have the shirt that has armor in the shoulders, armor in the elbows, a back protector. And I also have the Born Armor uh, pants, or they're really more like a uh, uh, fleece tight. They have armor in the shins, armor in the knees, armor in the thighs and then armor on the pelvis and you wear that under your jeans so under your jeans with your leather riding pants and then other under your leather jacket so you've got the best of all worlds there you have crash protection with the armor and you have leather in case you slide the problem in the summer is that the leather just doesn't breathe all that well and generally leather jackets from my experience and in my opinion only 
they don't come with as many vents or as much airflow that you can get when it's hot outside. Now, it doesn't get Texas hot here or Florida hot, but it will get up to 30, 32 degrees Celsius. And uh, I'm one of those people, I wear all the gear all the time. I've seen too many people come through the hospital and heard too many stories of friends who have crashed their bikes and gotten really bad road rash. Uh, you see it all the time, people, uh, you know, you don't want to be stereotypical, but you see it all the time here anyways, in, in and around Edmonton, Alberta, people riding sport bikes and cruisers in sandals and shorts and t-shirts and a beanie helmet. And that is going to protect absolutely nothing. I understand it's hot, but here are my thoughts. I can carry a bar of deodorant with me and another t-shirt if I soak through one because it's hot, hot and I'm uh, sweating a lot. So yeah, for me it's all the gear all the time. And that means a full face helmet, riding jacket, riding pants, proper gloves, proper boots, and eyewear. Now in the summertime I wanted a little more relief as we rode in the hotter months so that's why I picked up this Olympia Motorsports jacket because the jacket is essentially all mesh. There's no vents to open because it's all vents and then what it has is it has two liners that zip in underneath. One liner provides the uh, waterproof layer, the other one provides the warmth and that's what I'm wearing today underneath the jacket and of course if it's especially cold in the fall or in the spring, then you could just wear a sweater underneath. And my choice is a uh, Champa old school fleece sweater. And what it does is it has two layers, one layer that cuts the wind and one layer that keeps you warm. And it works really well at blocking the wind and keeping you warm on those uh, colder mornings or colder evenings. So I wear, uh, when I talked to him, I said, you know, I wear a combination. I, uh, when I ride this V-Strom 1000, I actually ride. It's just, okay, I guess he doesn't want to turn. <laughs> Alberta drivers. So I wear my leather full riding pants with my armor over my jeans. And then I wear my either my mesh jacket or my leather jacket. Uh, he never saw the value in leather, and that's obviously his personal choice. Uh, he does now, however, want to take his bike to the track. And of course, if you want to take it to the track, you need to have leathers, you need to have armor, and you need to be able to zip the jacket and the pants together on the back in case you're sliding on your back, that way you don't get road rash on your back. So I'd love to hear what your guys' opinions are. I know the guys that I ride with are quite the mixture. I, my buddy Matt rides a uh, Suzuki 1250 FA. And in the summer, or sorry, in the fall or the spring, he'll ride with a full tech, I believe it's Olympia, a jacket and pants, uh, which we lovingly call the snowsuit. It's only because we're jealous. And in the summer, he will uh, get rid of the pants and he will wear full leather pants uh, over his jeans and he will uh, either wear the tech jacket or switch to his leather jacket. My other buddy Heath, he uh, rides a cruiser, a power cruiser, an M109R and he's a leather pants, uh, unless it gets really hot that it's uh, riding jeans and uh, leather jacket until it gets really hot then he wears his t-shirt and his vest but he does wear a full face helmet and gloves and appropriate boots. So there's uh, you know many different ways to skin a cat if you like. It's all what's comfortable and what you know you're gonna wear. To continue with the trials and tribulations of the GoPro camera, and again I hope everything's working out okay today. Uh, I originally started trying to shoot in 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh, the camera will go faster than that frames per second. I believe it goes up to 80 if you want. The problem I found is that my computer, to keep it simple, my computer and my graphics card are not powerful enough to process the information. So what I need to do is I need to convert my files 
from MP4 format into a .mov file for my iMovie program on my Mac, which is not a big deal to do. It just takes a lot of time. So one of the suggestions they had was to try filming in 1080p at 30 frames per second or 45 frames per second. So today we're going to do 30 frames per second. We'll see if the video quality changes much and we'll see if I'm just able to drop and load or import this footage into iMovie and uh, edit it from there. So this is the town of Wetaskiwin. My buddies and I, when we uh, want a quick little ride, it's about an hour and a half round trip from our house out here. We'll stop at the Timmy's, have a frosty in the summer, maybe a cold beverage, and then we'll head back. The roads going back are very nice. They pass some really nice uh, cattle farms and uh, other types of farms, I guess, whatever they might be. We got the big uh, water source for Wetaskiwin. So there's our Timmy's. Millet is a pretty small town. I don't remember the population, but I will put it on the screen as I edit. I'm going to guess probably three to 5,000 people. It has the Kilburn Antique Market. And it has a burger barn. So it's got to be civilization if it has a burger barn. This is the place where the bikers come, Leanne's Bar and Grill. And usually you'll see quite a number of bikes out. It's early yet today. Lots of little mom and pop stores. Not a whole lot of chains here, which makes it kind of cool. The Switchback Merchantile. So now we're coming up to the town of Leduc. Uh, the previous town was called Cavanaugh. Leduc is my last stop on uh, on this uh, less populated road till I uh, have to jump back onto Highway 2 for about uh, 15k, 20k. Uh, to get back to Edmonton. And here we go, back on the super slab. Tell you one of the things I really like about this V-Strom is the amazing power that I can merge in any gear at any time and have the power to keep up with traffic or faster than traffic unlike when I had my cruiser and I had to do a little bit more planning for merging this bike it doesn't matter if you're in third gear and you want to accelerate from 60 to 120 second gear fifth gear sixth gear it doesn't matter pulls like a freight train I love it So now this is the outside of Leduc from Highway 2. And then we'll have the town of Nisku and then we'll be back in Edmonton. It's been a great ride, round trip here. We're gonna be about, oh, probably about 150K. Nice little ride. Blow the cobwebs off after work before a uh, beautiful weekend. And uh, who knows if the weather holds, hopefully we'll get out again this weekend. And if not, we'll see you in the next video.